Praise the Lord. We give God thanks for allowing us to be here another time. We will commence our study of the book of Genesis. We left off last time at uh, the end of chapter 5. We completed chapter 5. We are presently doing a verse-by-verse study of the book of Genesis. And today we will pick up in chapter 6 of Genesis, Genesis chapter 6. Praise the Lord. We bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here. Even as we congregate today in your sanctuary in the house of the Lord, Father, we pray that you'll cleanse us from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Sanctify us, Lord. Forgive us of our sins and our iniquity. Give us, O God, clean hands, pure hearts as we come together today, Lord. Pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, discernment, and revelation. Let our hearts become hungry for your words, Lord. Heal our lands. Heal our soul, our mind, our spirit, and our body, Lord. Let your spirit manifest in our midst as we come together today. Have thine own we pray. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Praise the Lord. So, we are in Genesis chapter 6. Now, this is a very troubling passage of Scripture that we are going to deal with in Genesis chapter 6, there's a lot of um, ministers who uh, don't, you know, know how to tackle or know how to handle this uh, portion of Scripture. And I hope and pray that the Lord will grant us the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding so that we can have an understanding of what the Lord is saying to us through these um, passages as we Open up chapter 6 today. Praise the Lord. It tells us, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. Now remember at the end of chapter 5, we saw where um, Noah was born. And also, we um, draw attention to um, uh, Adam. Adam, he passed away at 930 years. And uh, he, um, when he, Adam passed away, there was only, uh, he, he saw the birth of Lamech. And according to what we studied uh, last week, um, Adam passed away um, one generation, one generation before the flood. So Adam lived for a very long time, and uh, it is believed that uh, the flood came 1,665 years after the creation of the world. So Adam passed away when he was 930 years. So approximately 700 years after Adam passed away, then we have the flood upon the face of the earth. So, we are talking about what is going on here in chapter 6. He said, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. So, here we see that men began to multiply. You remember that uh, the Lord gave Adam and Eve the um, command to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And here we see that um, the population of the earth increased greatly. It ballooned greatly. And uh, the population was greatly increased. And uh, some people believe, uh, because as I said, uh, at this particular point, as we um, start uh, chapter 6, the earth or the world was about, say, 1,500 years. From creation up to this point, it was about 1,500 years, because from this point to the flood, It was another 120 years. So the the world itself, or the earth itself, was about 1,500 years. And uh, as we study last week, you will see that people were living uh, 900 years. 900, 800 and some plus years. So people were living a very long time. So what uh, interpreters of the Bible are saying, the population was greatly increased. And uh, there's a possibility that the earth at this particular time probably was 
as populated as the world today. You know, some people may not, you know, want to believe that. But when you take into consideration that people are not dying uh, frequently, people are living for a very long time. Uh, today we see that um, if somebody lived to 80 years, 85, 90 years, we say that they live a long life. But in this period of time, uh, Methuselah, who lived the longest, he lived 969 years. Adam lived 930 years. So could you imagine if somebody was living for such a long period of time, and it wasn't just these people who uh, are mentioned in Scripture who were living that period of time. Everybody who were uh, living at that time was living long lives. And um, what they are saying, there's a possibility that the world at that time probably was as populated as the world that we are living in today. Today we have, uh, there is about 7 billion people upon the face of the earth. And uh, some people believe that, uh, the, the, some interpreters believe that the world at that time was as populated. So what he's telling us there, men greatly increased and they greatly multiplied. And it said that daughters were born unto them. So what some people are saying is that, uh, you know, there were more, there was an increase of more ladies than men at that particular time. Daughters were born unto them. And uh, it tells us that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. Now, we, for us to understand what is taking place here, we have to try to understand who or who is the sons of God and who is the daughters of men that the scripture is talking about here. Now, what interpreters of the Bible are saying, in every part of the scripture where you find these words, sons of God, it always refers to angels or divine beings. And uh, when we Go to um, Job chapter 2. Remember in Job chapter 2 when it tells us that the sons of God uh, gather before the Lord present, to present themselves before the Lord. And there Satan also was gathered to present himself before the Lord. And other references in the scriptures when it talks about sons of God, it seems to always make reference to um, uh, angels. So what it is believed here, that these sons of God, sons of God that the scripture is talking about here, they came down, angels came down, or bad angels came down, and they commingle with the daughters of men. They um, enter into relationship with the daughters of men. The Bible says that they saw that these ladies were fair, and they took them, Wives of all which they choose. Now, because of the fact that he's saying that they took them wives, they believe that these um, angels, I, I guess, they possess the bodies of men because angel, uh, um, um, satanic beings or demonic spirit cannot, you know, attack people or do things to humans except if they do it through another human. So for them to really take a hold of these women as their wives, they have to possess other men. So what they did, they possessed men in that particular time, and because of the fact that they were able to enter into the lives of those men, they were able to um, get into relationship with um, ladies. Uh, 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 who was existing at that time. So it tells us in verse 2, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. So this, as I said, is a very troubling um, passage of Scripture. And uh, here in the New Testament, if you have time, you, let, let us just turn over to um, uh, Jude. Jude chapter, well, Jude uh, is only one chapter, as I said, verse 6. He tells us, And the angel will kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He had reserved in everlasting chain and the darkness unto 
judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, uh, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So what um, Jude is saying here, Jude is making reference to what took place in the days of Noah. That these um, angels um, who didn't keep their first estate, they leave their place in heaven and uh, they become renegade angels, ren our demonic spirit. And they came down and they took possession of these men and they enter into relationship with uh, these uh, ladies, according to what um, uh, Jude is telling us. And we also have another reference in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. Cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be uh, resolved unto judgment. And spare not the whole world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ash, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So here we see not only Jude who are making a reference to uh, these um, angels or demonic spirits that came down in the time of Noah and uh, enter into relationship with these women, but also Peter, he also make um, reference to that also. And uh, according to what the, it said at the end of verse 2, it said that they took these women, like they took them by force. And, uh, and they, they, choose, they, uh, choose, they took them of all which they choose. So whoever they choose, they enter into relationship with these, uh, uh, these ladies. And according to what verse 3 tells us, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. So because of this um, commingle, um, we have uh, demonic angels came down, angels who become renegade angels, leave their first estate, came down and enter into relationship with women back in the days of Noah. That was a gross sin in the sight of God. And because of that, the Bible tells us that God's spirit, he said, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with men. Because of that wickedness that was taking place uh, in the time of Noah, the Spirit of God, God said His Spirit shall not always strive with men. In other words, the patience that God have with the people at that time, the long suffering that the Lord have with the people at that time, it was getting short. God was getting to the place where His patience was going thin, and He was about to pronounce judgment upon the world. So He said in, in verse 3, The Lord said, My Spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. We are in Genesis chapter 6. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. So from this point here, because of this um, gross wickedness that was going on in the world at that time, God said that his spirit will not always strive with man. In other words, God, will, God said that the time will come when he's going to pronounce judgment. His patience it reached to the place where the, the patient and the long-suffering of God uh, run out, and God is about to take action against the, the people of the world for the wickedness that was going on, and he gave them a reprieve. And uh, the reprieve here was 120 years. And uh, this 120 years was 120 years before judgment is going to fall upon the world. And the judgment that was going to come here, it was the flood. You know, um, some people interpret the 120 years here to say that this is uh, the lifespan of man. Remember that people used to live over 900 years. And what they're saying is that God reduced um, the lifespan of man to 120 years. Now, that could have some 
um, Credence Day also. But it is believed that the 120 years here is 120 years uh, that Noah is going to preach. And after the, um, the 120 years expire, then God is going to pronounce judgment upon the world. So it tells us in verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. Now, also, when you come across these word, the, the word here, giants, I don't know if anybody um, ever take a study of it. And uh, what he, he is talking about here is, um, um, the, is demonic beings, giants. When he said, uh, there were giants in the earth in those days. And uh, uh, there, there's a name that the, the interpretation there is the Rephraim. They call him the Rephraim. And also, there's another name that is um, attached to those giants, which also interpret as uh, demonic beings, demonic spirits. And it, it, it said that uh, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of all men of renown. So, as I said, the word there, giants, when you look at other references in Scripture, it is referring to um, uh, demonic beings or, you know, unholy angels who take on these um, bad reputation on the earth. And what the Scripture is saying here is that these unholy angels, they take up residence in men. And after they took up residence in men, these men, they get into relationship with these ladies. And here the Bible tells us, and they bear children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of all men of renown. So these children that were born from uh, this kind of relationship, they become like super beings. Super beings. These people, they were powerful. Uh, if you remember in the Bible, we have men like um, Goliath. You remember? High idea. You remember when um, the children of Israel was, was about to um, possess the promised land? That uh, when they send the, the spies to spy out the land. Anybody remember that? When uh, Joshua sent the spies to spy out the land and they went in, they saw... Um, the, the men who went to spy, they saw these giants and they said that we were looking, when we look at them, we look at ourselves, we see ourselves as grass happers. And uh, these uh, spies, except for Joshua and Caleb, they were very discouraged and they become fearful, you know, when they saw um, these giants that were in the land. And it's the same reference here that um, Genesis chapter 6 is making. And in, in verse 5, uh, it, it tells us, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Now, the Bible tells us that God saw that the wickedness of man was great. And some of you ask the question, what was great about the wickedness that was going on? Uh, it was because uh, demonic beings... As I said, angels came down and they commingled with um, women in those days and they started to pr produce um, these super um, uh, beings who were conducting themselves, you know, in an unholy way in, in the earth. And because of that, it caused God to pronounce judgment. God had to take action so he can cleanse the earth. And that's the reason why we have the flood. The flood came... Because of that gross wickedness that was going on at that time, and uh, those uh, unholy angels mixed themselves up with human beings, and because of that, God had to get rid of them. He had to cleanse the earth. And uh, the only way the earth can be cleansed is by the Lord bringing in the flood and getting rid of all of those um, wickedness that was going on at that time. It tells us in verse 6, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And somebody will say, well, you know, this scripture is contrary 
to other parts of the Bible because the Bible tells us that God is not a man that he should lie and uh, that he should repent. And here it is saying that the Lord repent. And we have to understand that when we are making reference to God or when writers in the Bible are making reference to God, you know, they have to use human terminology so that they can relate to us uh, things in regards to God. And when, you, when you're talking about God in this way, it doesn't um, represent the same way like how a human person will repent of something. God wasn't repenting of sin. When we talk about repent, we are talking about we repent of our sins, uh, of, of our wrongdoings. But when we see here in verse 6 that the Lord repented, it is not in the same context as when a human person commits something uh, that is wrong and they repent. Now, uh, the feelings of God towards man change because of the gross wickedness that was going on in the world. Because you remember that the Lord, He created man in His own image, in His own likeness, placed Him in the Garden of Eden, gave Him all of these privileges. And here we see that the state that the world was in right now, that is what caused um, God to repent it or, you know, feel sorry that he created man. And it tells us in, in verse 6, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Now, as, as I said, the writer here uh, is using these uh, human terminology so we can understand what was going on. And somebody will say, well, it means that God has a heart. You know, God is not a physical being as us. The Bible tells us that God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. But to bring it down so that we can understand what was going on, He have to use these words. And uh, the only words that seem fitting for Him to use so that we could understand is to use the word repent and use the word grieve and use the word heart so we can have an understanding of what was taking place. Praise the Lord. In verse um, 7, he said, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. So because of that gross wickedness that was upon the face of the earth, God had to cleanse the earth. God said he is going to destroy man whom he has created from the face of the earth. Also, he is going to destroy even the beast and all of the creeping things. And somebody will say, well, what did the animals did? The animals didn't commit any sin. It was man who was involved in the, uh, the, the gross sin that was taking place. And why would God destroy the animals also? And, you know, somebody might, you know, take um, offense towards that. But you see, man was responsible. God placed man in uh, 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 that responsible position. Man was made overseer of the whole world. He was like the president, the main person of the whole world. And because he messed up so bad, for God to um, cleanse the earth, He have to get rid of him, and also He have to get rid of the the the, the, the animals also. And we saw that um, um, He gave Noah command to take two of every animal into the to the ark. So not you know all of the animals uh, that was destroyed, but most of the animals that was on the earth at that time suffered during the flood. Now um, it, it tells us in verse eight, but Noah found grace. In the eyes of the Lord. So here we see, in spite of all that was going on in the world, there was still somebody who was trying to please God. There was still somebody who was conducting themselves and trying to um, follow the Lord. The Bible said, Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. The word grace means favor. It means that Noah, he was accepted by God. His lifestyle wasn't um, in the same way as those wicked people who were uh, operating on the face of the earth at that time. Noah, he did not, he chose not to live the same lifestyle like those other people. And the Bible says he found grace in the sight of the Lord. 
And in verse 9 it tells us, These are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. So here he is given the generation of Noah. And he tells us that Noah was a just man. And the word there, just, don't mean that he was sinless. Nor was that sinless. He was mature and... Uh, yes, go ahead. Yes, Pastor. If we, if we look to right back from Genesis where we started to now, mm-hmm. I, I don't see one place where God, say, where God passed any commandment to the people and tell them, don't do this and do that as the commandment he gave to Moses. Mm-hmm. There is no commandment here. So what God was holding them guilty for there? Well, uh, they... they um, the, the, the only commandment that was given, and you're right, is when uh, they were in the garden, the Lord told them that they wasn't supposed to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, uh, even these people, who all those people who were drunk in the flood, during the time of the flood, um, according to um, what Bible scholars are telling us, based on what is said in the book of Romans, the Bible tells us at the time of ignorance, during this time, or those people who were under the law, who died during this time, God, in other words, wink and, you know, at their ignorance, and a lot of people seeing it, you know, where God forgive them. Even of all of the wickedness that they have done, God forgive them because of the fact that the Messiah was not yet come, and because of the fact that the Messiah was not yet come, um, all of the sins that they commit against the Lord, the Lord... Um, Forgive them. Uh, when Jesus came and died on the cross of Calvary, his sin um, reached way back and, you know, blocked out all of those iniquities, those sins that they committed even back in the Old Testament times. So, yes, you're right when you said that there was no command that was given except for that one command in uh, Genesis um, chapter uh, 1 where the Lord told Adam and Eve, that they wasn't supposed to partake of that fruit. That was the only command they have at that time. I don't know if that helped you, um, Elder. Praise the Lord. So, in verse 9, But these are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. Now, uh, what he's saying here is that Noah, he wasn't sinless. Noah wasn't sinless. He was just. In other words, he was doing what was required of him. He was being good to his neighbors. He wasn't living the same kind of lifestyle like uh, those, wicked, uh, those other wicked men. He was trying to please the Lord. He found grace in the sight of the Lord. And I love what it said at the end of that verse. It said uh, he was perfect in his generation. And some interpreters look at this word, their generation, to mean genes. And what they are saying is that Noah's uh, genes wasn't uh, corrupted. In other words, his, his um, genealogy, Noah's race of people was not corrupted by these um, sons of God or unholy angels, those demonic beings that came down and possessed these men and entered into relationship with these women. Noah's generation was not corrupted by those men. And when we go back to Genesis chapter 3, you remember when the Lord told Eve that um, there was someone coming to tell her that the seed of the woman, anybody remember, remember that scripture? The seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent and the serpent shall bruise the heel of the seed of the woman. And uh, these uh, unholy angels that came down, these demonic beings that came down, and enter into relationship with these ladies. I think it has something to do with the fact that um, Satan was on uh, lookout for that person that God was going to send. That person who was supposed to crush the head of the serpent, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan was on the lookout for that person. And uh, he was trying his best to corrupt the gene pool. And uh, by entering into relationship with these men... He, he tried to corrupt the, these women, sorry. He tried to corrupt the gene pool, so um, the plan that God had to send the Messiah to redeem um, Adam's fallen race will be followed. Go ahead, um, brother. 
Yes, the, this um, Nephilim, Nephilim yes. that um, we talk about here, the sons of God, that came down and um, corrupt the, the, the seeds of men, the women. Yes. It is the same to the uh, um, angels you talk about in the, in the book of Revelation. They say it was war in heaven, and Michael fought against the mm. dragon, and he was carried out third of the angels. Is it the same angels or a different type of angels? No, I, about I, 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 I think uh, it's, it's, it's different. Now, because uh, we have to try to distri- distinguish some of these um, uh, different things. Because the angels who were cast out, when it, it tells us, I think it's one third of the angels were cast out with Satan when Satan rebelled against God. And uh, those angels are different to these angels that we are talking about here. Because you remember, um, um, Satan fell before um, creation. Although, as, as we were saying when we were studying the Ola- earlier chapters in Genesis, um, Satan fell earlier. And he, 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 he fell before um, creation. And uh, God didn't really make any, there, there's no mention of it in Genesis. But we can see that that took place before creation. So I don't think that those are the same um, angels that we are making reference to here. I think this is a, a, another group of bad guys who decide to become renegade angels. And we also have that happen again because um, as I make reference earlier to um, the time when Joshua and the children of Israel, they were supposed to possess um, the promised land and also there were um, giants also in the land as the, the elder used the name, uh, the the, 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 those unholy um, angels, they were also in the land. So it seemed as though there was a second time that that happened, that these unholy angels came down and uh, commingled with um, well, men or women and uh, caused these super beings to be produced. Remember Goliath? Go- Goliath wasn't, he wasn't a regular human person. Uh, Goliath was, he probably was about 12 to 14 feet in height. And uh, uh, as I said, when uh, the children of Israel went in uh, to spy out the land and they saw these great humongous kind of uh, men, they said we, we were in their sight like grasshoppers. And uh, these men, they were terrorizing people. They were called the fallen ones. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Concerning, okay, angels. Mm-hmm. Does angels have sexual desire? That's a good point. Now, uh, Jesus tells us uh, somewhere in Matthew that when we, when we enter heaven, we will be like the angels because the angels don't marry, right? And what interpreters are saying, Jesus didn't say that they, they, they can't uh, procreate. What, what, all that he said is that they don't marry. And procreation and marriage will, uh, is two different things. Jesus said that angels don't enter into um, marriage. But what interpreters are saying, um, Jesus didn't cross out procreation. But as I said, um, these angels, what they did, they possessed. They didn't do it themselves either because uh, an angel can't get into a relationship with a human person like that. So what they did, they possessed men. And because of the fact that they possessed men, they were able to, um, to, to, to do these um, acts and cause... Um, uh, these um, super beings to be produced. Yeah, I have a question. Well, you kind of answered it in the last part there. Mm. But when you said the, the, son, the sons of God came down in the middle with me, um, the daughters of men, mm. wasn't it this, the angels that went with the um, ladies? No. Uh, uh, they're, they're, well, as I said, um, what they did, they possessed. They possessed men. Yeah, but they, um, there was angels, they came down. Mm-mm. I will believe that they went with the ladies themselves. But no, that's no, but, men, that, that's, the well, that's what we're trying to dist- disting- distinguish. Because, you know, sometimes uh, the, the scripture don't, is not clear on these, on these things. So we can't be too um, dogmatic about it. What we are saying is that angels can't really enter into relationship with human beings. But the only way that could happen is for them to possess other men. They possess, possess men, and these men enter into relationship with the ladies. And through that relationship, we have these super beings. Bible talk call them uh, men of renown. 
But I don't believe, I don't believe that the angels, those demonic angels themselves, enter into a um, relationship with the ladies. I believe that it is people, human beings, human men, who are possessed. Just like how the devil can possess people today. Um, Satan, uh, those demons possess those men, and those men will enter into relationship with the ladies. Concerning, okay, uh, when a, a husband and a wife co- come together, husband and wife come together, mm-hmm. and behind closed doors. So, are you saying that you have people, some, somebody in the spiritual world looking at what you're doing? Well, because where does the angels get this idea from? You know? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, all, all, uh, if you go back to what the scripture tells us. The scripture, look, 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 look at what it said. It said that, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Yeah, they, they look at them and they, they saw that they were fair. Just like how us men today, when we check out a lady, we check out to see how she looks, check to see if she has a bottle, bottleneck shape, as we say. Check to see if she has, you know, good size breasts and uh, see how uh, her boom she is and all this kind of thing. We check all these kind of things. And uh, this is what was happening here. The angels were checking out... Um, or these um, unholy angels were checking out these ladies. But as I said, I don't think that the, the, those angels that came down, I don't believe that they actually did the work themselves. They possessed other men. Because they were demons. They possessed men, and those men who they possessed, they used them. You know, so, so uh, as we we, 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 we talking on, on this uh, line here now, somebody might ask the question, can they do that today? Should women today be afraid? Should ladies today be afraid, thinking that some demonic spirit might have interference with them? I don't think, if you are born again, and if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I don't think this is something that we should really concern ourselves with. I think that all of us are covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. But um, as we said back in the time of Genesis chapter 6, this thing really happened. But I don't believe that it was the angels, the bad angels themselves that did that work. I believe that they used other human men, human beings to do their dirty work. Okay, these are the generation. These are the generation. There. Did, we, the, did we go there? Uh, verse 9, these are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his gene. So as I said, Noah genes or Noah gene pool was not corrupted by these um, angels. And I was saying that it was a plan by Satan to get to the Messiah. Satan's plan was to get rid of that one who was going to crush the head of the serpent. And he continued to Um, tried to get to that one who was going to crush his head. You remember during the time of Moses when uh, uh, Satan, he stirred up Pharaoh to kill all of the firstborn of the Jewish people. And that was another plan by Satan to get to the one who was supposed to crush his head. You remember also during the time of Jesus, when Jesus was born, Satan tried the same um, trick again, the same strategy again. All of the firstborn who were born during the time of Christ, he gave out the decree so that they should be killed. But he wasn't successful. God is always, you know, in control. Uh, it tells us in, in, in verse uh, uh, 10, And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Uh, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was um, filled with violence. So here again, he's giving us the reason why God had us to cleanse the earth. Because the earth was corrupt. And the the corruption, the main corruption, is due to those um, uh, demonic influence. Those um, bad angels that came down and used men to, you know, conduct themselves with these ladies and produce these uh, men who become violent upon the face of the earth. And they try to corrupt the gene pool. Because of that, the whole world, the Bible said, was filled with violence. And I think we are seeing something today. We are experiencing that today. The world seems to be filled today with violence. 
Everything today, you know, you turn on the TV, you could hardly get a, a, a movie on television that you could watch without seeing a whole lot of violence. There is, you know, for you to get a movie, to watch a movie on TV today that don't have obscene language, you have to go back maybe 50 years ago. Maybe you have to go back in the 40s or in the 50s, the 60s, to get one of those nice, clean movies. But all of the movies, all of the uh, movies that they're making for 2014, 2015, 16, 13, all of these movies, they are, are, are filled with obscene language, filled with violence. And what they're saying is that little kids, before little kids reach to um, a teenager, um, they, 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 they will see so much killing and murder um, before they reach to adulthood. And it's true. Because the world today is filled with violence. And it seems as though the, 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 the people of the world just have that taste for violence. It was this week somebody was saying that, you know, um, years ago, um, the person was saying that years ago in the States, when somebody hold you up and uh, they will, um, you know, hold you up and they take your money, they say your money, uh, your life, but they don't, they don't take your life. But now when they hold you up, they will take your money and they'll take your life because people just have a taste for blood. And it's because of the fact that violence filled the earth. The earth is filled with violence and it's happening all over. And what this is saying to us, God cleansed the earth back in the time of Noah because the earth was filled with violence. And I personally believe that God is about to do another cleansing. And the, the cleansing that he's going to do is going to be by fire. It's not going to be by water anymore. It's going to be by fire. That fire is going to be when the, the Lord came, comes, and pronounced judgment upon the world. It, it tells us in verse 12, we try to close up, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupt his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So here God is about to purge the earth. The earth he is about to cleanse the earth. And uh, he's about to destroy um, the earth. All the humans that are upon the earth, except for Noah and his family, was going to be destroyed. And I think we left off. We'll leave off here today and pick up next week from verse 14 when... The Lord is going to give Noah uh, the commandment to build an ark of gopher wood. Praise the Lord. If there, is there any question or any comment anybody would like to make before we close? Praise the Lord. Is anybody um, doing any um, reading? Are you reading ahead? Is anybody reading ahead? Is anybody reading ahead? Praise the Lord. I think if you do some reading ahead, that will help a lot. And as I said before we start chapter 6, this is a, a very troubling part of Scripture to really um, um, understand and to exposit. But we hope and pray that the Lord, um, the Holy Spirit, give us inspiration so that we can understand what was going on in those days. May the Lord bless us. Praise the Lord. Um, Ella Lewis, say a word of dismissal for us, please.